This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Continuum available on Verizon. This is Verizon's latest Samsung Galaxy S family phone. Joins the Fascinate, and they share a lot of similarities. The the big Super AMOLED display over here, really pretty, vibrant, and colorful, and the attractive, albeit definitely plasticky design that loves fingerprints. As you can see, I've barely held this, and it's smearing, but when you wipe it up, it's a nice-looking phone. One thing they've done that we love is they finally put the power button up top where it belongs instead of on the side where it was too easy to actually hit the power and the volume together when squeezing the phone. And the micro USB jack is still on the side. The volume buttons are now up top over here on this side where you'd expect to find them. And we have the micro SD card door right here. Shutter button for the camera. And back to the front of the phone. Here's your earpiece. Obviously on the back here we've got what's a very loud speaker. <laughs> You'll definitely hear this even in a loud car if you're using this for navigation directions and the 5 megapixel camera with flash. So what makes the Samsung Continuum different from the Samsung Vibrant here is this has two displays. This is a ticker display at the bottom separated by the usual Android keys over here. As you can see the Continuum is narrower than the Vibrant and the Vibrant again is pretty much just like the Fascinate on Verizon. They both share 800 by 480 resolution on the main display, but the main display here is only 3.4 inches, which is kind of unfortunate because stuff is a lot smaller. It's a little harder to use the on-screen keyboard, and you're going to have to zoom in more to read text. And down here with the ticker, you've got access to information. The weather over here just shows you general conditions. There's a graphic over here. If you tap on that, you can get more information. And you can see missed call status, things like that here, and missed email messages. These will light up if you have any that you've missed. And then you've got Facebook, Twitter, MySpace feeds in here. And RSS news feeds as well. If I tap on that, it brings up full screen of my Facebook. And while we're in the ticker interface up here, that expands to show me right now everything, or I can choose social networks, RSS news feeds and events if I have any calendar events and say I want to tweak something. You choose the thing it is you want to tweak, hit the menu button and you can go to ticker settings. And then you can actually change settings for weather, say your location, social networking, RSS feeds, and so on. So if we go into social networking, so if you go into Facebook over here you can choose what things you get notifications of down in the ticker. Twitter is not as granular as Facebook. You can't choose just to be notified of DMs for example. But Facebook is pretty versatile. And you can even set alert sounds and vibrations as well. So it's interesting to have this little ticker down here. When you turn the phone off, everything does go off. It doesn't stay alive. But sometimes the phone will wake up and just light up the ticker down here so you get an update from a Facebook or an RSS feed or something like that. Is it a gimmick? Sure it is. Is it useful to you? Well, that's for you to decide. Beyond that, this is pretty much your normal Galaxy S phone. It's got the usual 1 GHz Hummingbird processor, which is a very fast processor with graphics acceleration. The micro SD card slot, a good camera that takes pleasing shots. Again, the Super AMOLED display over here, and the usual GPS, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. And the GPS works quite well in this, no problems as we had with some of the Galaxy S phones early on, particularly on GSM carriers. This ships with VZ Navigator on board. You can see right here, and this is pretty much the same interface you see on VZ Navigator on any phone, including feature phones. And it uses Bing for its POI search. And right now it's getting a fix and updating it. So we, we did notice a couple of hiccups with, with VZ Navigator. Uh, the GPS always managed to lock on solitary location, but the rerouting in VZ Navigator wasn't so good in our initial test, so we're going to give that some more tries. We noticed taking a simple two-mile trip where there are about three different ways to get to that place, we chose a different route and it had tr trouble rerouting, and in fact it never did come up with a new route. But if we interrupted it to take a look at our location on the map, the GPS in fact did know where we were, so it was a navigation problem. Google Maps is not pre-installed on this. You have to go to the market and download it. We did that, and that was spot on for directions and for GPS location. So here's the Navigate interface, which is pretty vanilla here. You, you choose your address to enter it. You really can't search for POIs in this interface. You have to use Bing. And you can start from your current location or other options and choose your route. 
In terms of interface, this runs TouchWiz 3.0 just like the other Galaxy S phones, which means you get the little overlay over here, and for applications you have the, the multi-screen sideways scrolling instead of the up and down scrolling. This is running Android 2.1, by the way. Froyo should come at some point for this. And any applications that you add on are placed at the end of the line. They are non-alphabetical, as are the built-in applications. Bummer. This comes with the usual bundle of Samsung Galaxy apps. We've got Frink for your office, the free version, Right to Go, Mini Diary, and a couple other apps. Mostly the, the TouchWiz apps, I have to say, I like, and they do add some value to the phone. Blockbuster comes pre-installed on the phone, as does Kindle Reader. Of course, you can download Kindle yourself from the market, but Blockbuster is nice if you happen to be a Blockbuster customer. You can download movies over Wi-Fi and then watch them on your device at leisure. We've got Skype Mobile here, thanks to Verizon's partnership with Skype. And not a heck of a lot of other Verizon applications. So you can download some more like Vcast Music using the Android Market and the Verizon tab, which I'll show you right here. Verizon has their own dedicated tab, and you can choose from NFL Mobile, My Verizon, Visual Voicemail, Rhapsody, and a couple of other recommended applications that they like. Performance on the phone is very good. It's uh, the usual Galaxy S level of performance. It does pretty well in benchmarks. Considering it's running Android 2.1, it's not going to get those fantastic Froyo numbers, but the Quadrant benchmarks that we got were about 849 on average. And we haven't had too many slowdowns or hiccups with the phone so far at all. Let's take a quick look at the YouTube player on this. This is streaming over Verizon's 3G EVDO Rev A network. As you can see here from the bars, we have a, a middling signal, just a little bit less than half bars and about 90 dB of signal. I'll just pick something from the front page. and it defaults to low quality mode. Switch to high quality. And you can hear how loud the speaker is. And clear too. It looks pretty good, especially because it's, it's squeezed down into a 3.4 inch display. It looks even sharper, it increases the pixel density. Good speaker quality. Speaking of speaker quality, Samsung also has a nice custom music player on here that's certainly head and shoulders above what Android has to offer. In terms of contacts, it's enhanced with Samsung's custom look, and this integrates with Facebook and MySpace and all that. You can see what the interface looks like here, and you can link the contact up if there's an availability, and it's pretty good at finding duplicates if you have somebody in your address book, and then you're also, you've also got them in your MySpace contact list, for example. It can link them together and dedupe that way. And you've got history, activities, and media associated with that person as well, which is pretty nice. Call quality on the phone is really very good. We're impressed with the call quality on the phone. Reception is just average. Nothing fantastic here. If you live in a weak reception area, you may have trouble with the phone, but if you have a good Verizon signal where you live and work, then the phone should work out just fine for you. And we'll check out the usual Android web browser over here, which first goes to the Verizon portal. Accelerometer. It also has an ambient light sensor and a proximity sensor, by the way. And we'll visit our site so you can see how the web browser renders and the speed, and here is the keyboard. It's the Samsung's typical customized keyboard. It's nice. You can press and hold if you want the alternate key, like the at sign or number key. And, of course, there's swipe over here as well. Keyboard's a little bit harder to type on because the keys are smaller, because the display is smaller. Yeah, it's packing in a very high resolution. Well, there's our website. Scrolling speed is pretty good, and the zoom speed is pretty good. Since this is running Android 2.1, you will not get flash. 
But of course, the, the built-in YouTube player can handle playing YouTube videos and some mobilized Flash content in the meantime. And the browser does support HTML5. If you press and hold on the home button as with any Android phone, you've got your task manager here and you can switch between your applications quickly. Anyway. Camera interface is interesting on this phone, so we're going to show that to you. You've got a whole lot of stuff going on here. This isn't just the basic Android one. You've got all this stuff over here, and you can choose your autofocus, macro mode, face detection mode, for example, scene settings, self-timer, effects, white balance, ISO, metering, anti-shake, image quality, blink detection, for those people who blink whenever the flash is about to hit them. And then you've got more tools here for shutter sounds, review period, and yes, you can turn the shutter off. The phone can shoot 720p video, as well as take pretty decent 5 megapixel shots. So that's the Samsung Continuum, available on Verizon. It's $199 with a contract, and it's available now. Visit Mobile Tech Review to read the full review.